Hey, our future is so bright, we gotta wear shades. Get ready to imagine it, everybody. I'm here outside with the chief scientist at the Imagination Station, Carl Nelson. He's talking not about the birds and the bees, but about the bulls and the beads. What's happening? Actually, we're going to talk about the eclipse that's coming up on August 21st. There you go. Um, if you haven't heard about it, it's going to be a really cool event. Um, it's about the first time in 40 years that the entire U.S. will be covered by a total solar eclipse. And that's why I'm wearing sunglasses. Well, we'll get to that in a second. Okay. But I just want to warn you that those glasses are not appropriate for watching the solar eclipse. Okay, good okay, to know. But, but they are good for other things. Um, but with the solar eclipse, just to keep in mind, we won't see full totality here, about 85%. They'll still be really cool. Okay, but when we're talking about looking at a solar eclipse, the only glasses that are really okay are these kind of glasses and oh. the paper glasses that we're going to be handing out down here at the Science Center. Excellent. Now these totally block out the sun. I can look at the sun <laughs> with no fear because they block the super bright visible light and the UVA and UVB light. Now you've probably heard about UVA and UVB when you talk about sunscreen. Absolutely. Okay, so I've got some really cool product here. We sell this in the store. They're, plastic beads that change color based upon exposure to UV light. Mood so beads. open these up just and quickly get a good shot of this. As soon okay. as you pull those out, they start white and Whoa. if you keep them in the sun, they change color. Oh wow. So the dye inside the bead changes color based upon the amount of UV light hitting them. Okay? That's wild. And so in fact, your sunglasses you're wearing there will yes. block the light as well. I've been covering up half the beads. And if we take this away, you can see they were a little bit lighter and they quickly change color. Wild. Okay? So I thought it would be fun to do a little experiment here with the different SPF factors. I've got a 50, I've got a 100, I think there's a 30, and a 15. I've got bees, uh, beads in the bowls, and they're all fully like colored from the UV light. Now there's two kinds of UV light. There's UVA. That's the stuff that uh, gives you a suntan. It's about 75% of what gets through our atmosphere is UVA. Okay. UVB is about 5%. That's what this sun protection factor or skin protection factor is talking about. All right. Sunscreen blocks UVB, which causes skin cancer. Okay. So we're going to we'll just do a little test. What I'm thinking here is we'll spray a light coat on top of the beads <laughs> and see what happens. All right, let's do okay? it. Okay. So, I'll, and let's try to be a little bit uh, scientific about this. Maybe give it like three good sprays. And you, and you do this one too. I'll start at this end with the low. Two. Now they're going to be foggy to start with. Give it a second and they will it clear up. It smells like I'm on spring break. It does. It's a wonderful smell, isn't it? <laughs> um, so let me get this open here. Okay. Now, the interesting thing is the plastic lets the UV light through. Glass will actually block UV light. So if we take this piece of glass away. Okay, come on over here because check I can this see out. some of the beads here are white, some are purple. So the glass mostly blocks the UV, but not all of it. Yeah. And some of the beads are more sensitive to UVA and UVB, so you get that kind of mix. The blue ones especially must this be really sensitive. Why you can't get a tan through a window. That's right. Windshields will block the UVA, which gives you the tan, and they're also coated to block some of the UVB. The side windows are not, which is why sometimes your arm will get a suntan. Wow. In. Now, if we check out our things. Wow, you really toasted that one up Sorry. there. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Let's see if we can maybe... Uh, you know what, but you did, you did a great thing. You did a great thing. You totally coated that really, really thick because the most common problem with sunscreen is people don't put on enough, yeah. right? Um, in fact, the way this stuff works here, I'll see if we can, wow, Tony, Tony. All right, check these out. <laughs> I think you can see inside you said there. three sprays. I know, I know, and you did good. That, that was good, that's how you're supposed to apply it. Um, but down here, you can see that the, some of the colors have gone. Here, we have a little bit of the blue. I think it's a little bit more sensitive, the UVA, which this stuff is not doing such a good job of blocking. But I guess the point is, and you did an excellent job here, the point is the way this stuff works is it absorbs the UV light. It breaks down after about an hour. Okay. They've done studies. Most people only apply 50 to a third, 50% to a third of yeah. what you need to apply. And you need to reapply too. You need to reapply every two hours. All right, good sun tips down here at the Imagination Station. If you want to come down and make sure that you're well slathered, <laughs> get on down here because if you show up on Saturdays and you live in Lucas County and you have a kid who lives in Lucas County, those 12 and under get in free with a paid adult admission. So come on back here and we're talking about sun science because we're leading up to the big solar event that's happening and that is going to be on Monday. The 21st. The 21st of August. So make sure you're well protected, make sure you're ready and, and make sure you're wearing sunscreen. That's how you imagine.